This video lecture is over the total row in Excel tables. What is the total row? Why is it useful? And how is it different than building your own total row in formulas in Excel? And how do you access it? Well, the total row is a function that is built into Microsoft Excel tables. It's very useful because with one click of the button, it will add itself to the bottom of your Excel table and will allow you immediate access to a variety of functions. It's very useful because these functions vary from just being the basic sum formula to average max min and it's going to put them at the bottom of the column where you might really want them, usually the last column in an Excel table. It's different than building your own total row in that. It takes one click and the label goes into place and the formula goes into place on that last column in the Excel table. It will use the subtotal function to create your subtotal. So even if you want just to add up the contents of a column, it inserts a variation of the subtotal function. When you change to having an average display, again, it doesn't use the average function, it uses a variation of the subtotal function. Now let's look at how to access it and use it. Here we are in the Widgets R Us worksheet. We go to the Table Tools Design ribbon of our Excel table. And right here in the Table Styles options, we have Total Row. We want to check that box. It will then take us down to the last row, and here we now have a Total Row right here. When you look at this, You'll see, if you look up here on the formula bar, that we're using the subtotal function to create a total. It's inserted not just this subtotal function, but it also inserted the label here. I can, at this point, change to a different function, perhaps the average, or any of the available functions that it would be appropriate to use here. So I'm going to just leave it alone, take it off, put it back on, and sum them up. When you get ready to change the label here, you do not use the down arrow. Because if I did use the down arrow, it doesn't put the word average in. It's going to average the dates. It comes up here with March 31st, and that makes sense because I have six months worth of data, so that's sort of making sense here. And in fact, what I really want to do, if I want to put in perhaps the average, is I just want to type in average, then come over here, and change this to average, and now I can see I have an average. If I no longer want that displayed, I simply click the box to uncheck it. Go on about adding new data. As new data is added, I pop it back in, and it displays as it was the last time I used it. Very useful because when I start filtering out, maybe I just want to see how many programmable sales, or how much programmable sales was, and what the average of programmable sales was. You'll notice that this number changes depending on what's being filtered in or out. So currently it's at $14,670.58. When I put it back on Select All and go back down to my total, my average is $6,505.28, significantly less. So you can see that programmable sales average is much higher. So it's very useful where if I was using a basic auto sum function down here instead of the built-in total row function, I would need 
to change my formulas here in order to just pick up what was filtered in or out. Very, very handy and useful and super easy to use.